Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast This Week in America. Great to have you with us on the program today. Janie Smith is an award-winning corporate consultant, speaker, CEO, internationally recognized keynote speaker, best-selling business book author. She's the CEO and president of Smart Advantage, Inc., a sales marketing management consultancy with clients ranging from mid-sized companies to Fortune 500 companies, regularly leading clients to increased revenues and sales close rates. She was selected by an international organization of over 16,000 business leaders worldwide as one of the 50 most influential people of their first 50 years. Janie is the author of Creating Competitive Advantage, now in its 16th printing and ranking in the top 1% of all books sold on Amazon. Her companion book, Relevant Selling, is now in its third printing. Numerous CEO coaching top performer awards, a contributing business expert columnist to Affluent Magazine, and Janie Smith with us on This Week in America. Janie, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Why, thank you, Rick. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. I am looking forward to talking about the book. What a great book, Creating Competitive Advantage. And you start off, obviously why it's in its 16th printing, and you start off with a very simple question, what I think is a very simple question, but for some it seems to be a question they stumble over, which is, why should I do business with you and not your competitor? And that would seem fairly simple to answer. For some, it's rather difficult, isn't it? It is, and that is how I came to write the book, actually. When I first became a consultant a number of years ago, <laughs> a lot of years ago, <laughs> 25 plus, I started asking the businesses I worked with that question, why should I buy from you? And the answers I got over and over again were the same, regardless of the business. They were cliches, you know, good customer service, our people, our experience, so what? I kept saying to them, so what? I mean, you gotta have that or I'm not even entertaining you. And guess what? Your competitors are saying exactly the same thing. What makes you truly different? What gives me confidence that you're better than the next guy? And that's how it all began. Yeah, like I said, it seems so simple, yet you ask literally hundreds of CEOs how much time they devote to defining and creative, creating competitive advantages. And you found that many of them didn't do it at all. And if any of them did, it maybe was once a year for a minimal amount of time. Yes, that's correct. They don't, they don't, uh, really have this discipline in their organizations. And I'm talking about all size organizations. You know, I ask uh, CEOs frequently, um, how often do you consider and evaluate and analyze your very own competitive advantages and vis-a-vis -vis your competition? The two most common answers I get when they're being honest is never or once a year. And once a year, it's when they do planning and they really don't allot a lot of time for it. So that presents a problem because they really are not able to answer the question, why I should buy from you. Janie Smith, our guest on This Week in America, author, corporate consultant, speaker, CEO and president of Smart Advantage, Inc. The book we're talking about is Creating Competitive Advantage. Her website is smartadvantage.com. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You can link on directly to Janie's website and get information and information on the book. One of the really nice aspects of the book is you use real world examples. So it's not just a, a, a lot of words and like, okay, how can I actually implement them? You actually show us and you, you have at the beginning of the book, a CEO who was frustrated by the sales inability to close. And he got to thinking about what is it that sets us apart? He figured it out and suddenly his sales are increasing. Talk about that process because he gave it some thought to find his competitive advantage. And suddenly his salespeople were all ace salespeople. Gee, Rick, I don't know which example you're talking about because almost every <laughs> like that. I can give you so many. Um, in the first chapter of Creating Competitive Advantage, of course, this is uh, quite a number of years ago, but we talk about JTEC. JTEC was the restaurant pager. Um, and they were being, uh, after they came out with the restaurant pager, Motorola, the 800 pound gorilla in the beeper business, was about to enter the market. And we did some work very, very briefly with their teams, and I showed them this process that I've devised on how to uncover competitive advantages you didn't know you had. And they came up with one very, very simple one that kept the 800-pound gorilla from competing with them. So here it is. It's JTEC, the restaurant pager. Motorola says we're going to enter the market. What we were able to say to the marketplace and to Motorola, the following competitive advantage statement. It was simple. Of the 50 major restaurant chains in North America, 100% of them are using JTEC pagers. So now we're telling Motorola, you're swimming upstream, we've got the market. 
and they realized that and did not enter the market. JTEC went on to have extraordinary multiples in selling to a gigantic point of sale company a few years later. Yeah, when they have a competitive advantage like that, it gets attention. Even if somebody's standing next to you and he's got a business card for Motorola and you're familiar with who these people are, suddenly you're finding out, wait a minute, other people are going in this direction. The JTEC story is fascinating because this all started with a restaurant called Mr. Laughs. And this is how they went, they developed the beeper. And here was a restaurant and this guy is thinking, this is the greatest thing in the world. I'm so busy, people are walking away. And then his friends are telling him, wait a minute, we're, we're walking away. We're not spending any time with you. So what he used that as a competitive advantage to start his the pager. And then he took the pager national and became a, uh, a very successful company with that. That's right, Rick. You got the story exactly right. It started out as a restaurant losing the customers and then went on to this wonderful manufacturing business. Forget the restaurant. We, they did <laughs> The manufacturing, um, it, you know, the restaurant became really uh, an afterthought. But so many of our clients experience that. They, cr they identify what the customer values. And by the way, very few businesses do that too. They don't really, you know, they, they talk about the value proposition that they bring to the customer, but it's made up. It's not based on what the customer truly values. It's based on what they think the customer should value or what they would like the customer to value. And through many, many years of research, we've been able to prove that 90% of the businesses are getting it wrong. That's pretty frightening. It is. Janie Smith, our guest on the program. The book we're talking about is Creating Competitive Advantage. The website is smartadvantage.com. It's interesting because in the book you talk about this race to the bottom. I know how to be competitive. I'm just going to beat the other guy with price. And you're saying that's not necessarily the best way to do it or the smartest way to do it or the fin most financially fit way to do it. No, in fact, 90% of businesses, if we admit it, are commoditized. I can get what you sell, product or service, pretty much a lot of other places. So it's not what we tell our clients and what the book is trying to convey to everybody. It's not what you sell, what you sell, I can get elsewhere. It's how. Do you deliver on time? Do you deliver error free? Are your invoices accurate? Do your people respond to my complaints immediately with a favorable solution? The how are the real opportunities for creating competitive advantage that most businesses forget to look at. You have in the book examples of how you identify a competitive advantage. And you mentioned once before that so often you get caught up in cliches. If my business, I think my competitive advantage is a slogan that says a business you can trust, that's not really a competitive advantage, is it? Oh my goodness, that is such a cliche. You know, if you were to Google that, you'd probably... <laughs> 77 million that, yes. mentions of it. So it has no meaning. In fact, we tell our clients to do that. Take some of your key phrases or your taglines and Google it, and you will see how meaningless it has become. But, you know, if you want to say that I can trust you, then show me. You know, what we'd like to tell people, past performance is the best indicator of future performance, unlike a mutual fund. <laughs> In that, other yes. In other words, what have you been able to do last year, the year before, the year before, that's going to give me confidence that if I choose you, that you will be able to do it for me? In other words, instead of saying we will deliver within 24 hours, why not say we've been tracking on-time delivery for the past five years and we're averaging at 98.6%. That would give me much more confidence than the promise that you might deliver on time. That's a very simple comment example but uh, you know there are so many attributes like that that have to do with customer s customer service and customer interaction that companies are not measuring and not talking about and you can take a negative and turn it into a plus the book we're talking about is creating competitive advantage Janie Smith our guest on the program website smartadvantage.com a story in there about a uh, an office business company and sales are not going well. And one of the main reasons is customers are saying, we really can't trust you. You are inaccessible. When we need you, you're not around. And the CEO, the owner of the company says, tell you what, here's my home phone number. Not my business number that after five o'clock, I'll get, get you, you know, I get back into work on Monday morning. Actually give out his home number. And I think you point out he only had one call at home and somebody just wanted to see if this was actually his real home, home number. And it turned his business around. So you can take a negative and turn it into a competitive advantage. Yes, you can. And there are a number of ways of doing that. Um, we, we always show our clients that if you are in a bad position or your metrics aren't showing real well, at least show the story of the improvement. 
through a graph show that while we still have some issues we're working on, we're already 70% better than we were last year. And tell the story. Let them know that there's accountability internally and that we're fixing things. And that goes a long way. People don't expect uh, everybody to be 100% or perfect, but if they know that you've got your arms around something that's an issue that's important to them, you, that goes a long way. The nice thing about your formula is it works for everybody, regardless of product, regardless of service, regardless of size. Whatever you're attempting to sell to get out in front of other people, if you follow this very simple formula, competitive advantage, you're ahead of the game right away. That's exactly right, and I just wonder why more companies don't do it. I, I, <laughs> I do see more and more coming, coming out with some of the me measured results. Um, my book's been out 10 years. I'm not going to take credit for all of them, but I do like to think some of them are getting it, that customers want to know what your experience is uh, very specifically without saying, are people are experienced, are people are well-trained. That is so subjective. Your definition of well-trained and mine or maybe light years apart, so it doesn't tell me anything. But if you want to tell me that you've invested over X number of hours or dollars into training your people, I might have a better sense of what you're talking about. And those are simple things, they're simple fixes. And you know, as you point out, in creating competitive advantage, uh, we take a number of cliches and show you examples of how to turn them into something that has meaning to the customer that will get them to believe that you are, in fact, good at the deliverables that matter to them. The book is Creating Competitive Advantage. Janie Smith, our guest on the program, author, corporate consultant, speaker, CEO, and president of Smart Advantage, Inc. Her website is smartadvantage.com. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you can link on directly and get all of that information. It's interesting. You've got a, a whole chapter in the book on how to tackle Walmart. And people think, wow, you can only do it by price. You use an example. Kmart tried to do it with blue light spe specials. And for younger people listening, they probably wonder what a Kmart is. That shows you how effective that was. And other businesses that were able to find their competitive advantage, they're a little niche and been able to do it quite effectively. Talk about that because sometimes we think, well, again, we get back to price has to be the, the competitive advantage, and it really doesn't. No, only a handful of companies can be the price leader. That's a, a space that Walmart has claimed. But not everybody's buying on price. Many people are buying on convenience, on any number of uh, deliverables that matter to them that aren't priced. Uh, think, uh, you can ask yourself and your listeners, uh, how, what's most important to you? Uh, is it time? Is it money? Is it the convenience of just going around the corner and not having to think about the purchase? Um, is it that I know that you're going to deliver it on time in full? Is that worth paying for? You bet it is. Um, and so I will pay more. If you can convince me that I'm going to get, for example, if it's B2B, on time in full and an in accurate invoice, because the other guys have gotten it all wrong for so many years, if you can do it and you can prove it to me, I will definitely pay more for you. You know, the same thing is true with quality, for example. We had a client where quality was number one. And they did not even look at their return rate until we asked them about it. Well, they sent us their return rate. We, we put it into Excel spreadsheet and learned that for eight years, they had less than a half a percent return rate. That's incredible. And the sales force was not armed with that wonderful information to show customers how it was below 1% for years and less than 5%. In fact, in the last couple of years, you know, it was like 0.46%. That's something to, to blow your horn about, but they weren't. So we, we call a lot of companies are sitting on a gold mine of their own data that they're not using. A couple minutes left in the program. It's interesting because in the book, Creating Competitive Advantage, you've got five fatal flaws uh, the most companies make, and these are not just flaws, these are fatal flaws, and one is you've got a competitive advantage, but you don't tell your customers, and that's exactly what you were talking about there. They had a competitive advantage, and they really didn't even know the analytics until you brought it to their attention. That's correct. We see that over and over again, and we work real hard in finding out what analytics they're sitting on. The reverse is true. They, I said that was a landmine, a gold mine. We have companies sitting on a landmine. One company, we asked them what their return rate was. They didn't know. We told them to measure. They had 64 orders one month, and 52 of them had complaints, and they had no idea until we asked them to measure it. <laughs> that was pretty scary. Wow. So, so you're either sitting on a landmine or gold mine of data, and that helps you create a competitive advantage or prevent a major competitive disadvantage. 
As we close out the program, it's interesting. We've talked about people that may think they've got a competitive advantage because they've got a slogan or they, they've been in business for a number of years and they really find out that they don't. And that is that actually number one in the fatal flaws. Talk about what they should ask themselves if they think they have a competitive advantage mentally, what some of the criteria they should go through to see if, in fact, it's a cliche or whether it set them apart from the competitors. Well, a couple of things. It should be objective. It should be quantifiable. It should be not stated by the competition. We like to say it should be stated in the past tense so that it can capture what you've done there already. Um, so, you know, one of the things that people will commonly talk about is that their family business or that they've been around for 50 or 100 years. And so the next thing they should ask themselves, is this truly a buying criteria? Are people choosing me because we're a family business or because we've got 150 years under our belt? Those are not, when we test it, those are commonly not buying criteria. They may be interesting, but they are not top of the list, yet many, many companies will lead with those kinds of statements. So ask yourself, is the thing that I value about my own company something my customer values too? More often than not, we have learned through research, it is not. It's interesting, and the book is uh, Creating Competitive Advantage, a minute or so left in the program. It's interesting, as you work and do your research with these companies, it's not something, okay, we're going to implement this, maybe in two or three years we'll see a spike and we'll, we'll, we'll turn the corner. You say this really, you, you see the results early and often, so it doesn't take a whole lot of time for this really to kick in. No, that's correct. I mean, when we start putting these new competitive advantages in the hands of the salespeople, they have almost immediate spikes in sales. And I want to I want to say it's not just sales. It's in margins because they're not caving in on price to get the sale. They are absolutely showing the value, the value that most people will pay for. So they get increased margins, increased sales, and it does happen rather quickly. It's interesting because you do talk in the book about why people will pay more to value added, a concept that uh, really gets people's attention. So much in the book, Creating Competitive Advantage. It's available all across the country, a, a runaway bestseller. You'll find it on Amazon, where it's in the top 1% of all books sold. Uh, information at Janie's website, smartadvantage.com. Janie Smith, our guest on the program. Janie, time went by way too quickly. Would love to have you back on the program. Enjoyed reading the book. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, and I love that you really read the book because you, you knew you knew exactly what was in it. I've got marks throughout the book. It was it, it makes so much sense. Nice job with the book, and much more to talk about. Information with uh, Janie and the book available at our website thisweekinamerica.us. We'll be right back after these messages. Stay tuned. More on today's program, This Week in America. <laughs> 